Ladies and gents, we are back with a new track with the Lighthouse Podcast alongside my co-host, good friend Alex Comargo. We are here to, as always, bring you great content regarding real estate. I want to dive right into it, talk about real estate and uh, what's going on, current matters, right? Uh, what's your opinion with, uh, let's start with the question that will not uh, silent in itself, which is rates rising up, rising up, back on the street. <laughs> what do you think it's doing to, to the market now? Are we still um, getting a lot of offers like we used to because of when the rates were down? What's your opinion? Well, I think that, not I think, so the fact here is rates jumped from about three and a quarter, three and a half, um, about four or five months ago to now a five, five and a quarter. Five, so, five and a quarter, right? Yeah. I mean, it's to quite a few people that's a, that's been a 2% jump. Um, yeah. You know, and, and, and before, I'm sorry to cut you off on that, but before you, you, you jump into what this will uh, imply on a $400,000 home, 30 year mortgage, two points. What, what's the difference? Like if, if someone like, what were they paying three months ago and what, what would they be paying now with that two point difference? Those, uh, th that's a good question. Uh, those are some good numbers. So on a $400,000 loan, if you took, I uh, have to do this, um, uh, live, if you took a loan, um, at three and a quarter percent. This doesn't include your taxes or insurance. Three and a quarter percent on $400,000, you're looking at a monthly payment of about seventeen forty, and you're looking at a total interest on that of $226,000 at the end if you wait you know, all 30 years to pay for it. Now let's screenshot this, and we can put this on the screen as well. Now, when you switch this to a five and a quarter, 2% will bring you to a $2,200 payment a month. So it's $500 difference. $500 difference. Total interest on this is $395 from the $220. Wow. So almost not quite there, but it's, it's a significant amount yeah. over $150,000 more. Yep. Right? From three months. So what this is doing is uh, the person who could afford $500,000 before with an interest rate of, you know, three, three and a quarter can only afford a 420 now, 430. So this has taken away a lot of their affordability, which in turn puts them in competition with no longer the $500,000 buyers, but now the $400,000 buyers, which when you look at affordability in general, right? You're looking at the person who makes $60,000 um, a year, no debt, they can afford about 320. Um, and then they get together, they get married or, or they buy a house as partners. Um, and now you have two incomes, maybe 120, $130,000, but you also have some student loans and some car payments, or whatever. So, you know, before they would be able to afford your 500, now they can only afford 420, 430. Um, this has been, has been such a common scene because of uh, most people's um, average paycheck, right? A lot of the people that we know are making 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars a year. Uh, so houses have surpassed the average person's income to the point where like in, in you know, in a lot of the towns, uh, some of the towns where we live in, a lot of the towns where we work in, uh, the average person can no longer buy a house because there's no homes in their price range. So now they have to resort to a condo or you know, a townhouse if possible. Uh, so it's been, it's been tight uh, to a lot of people. And, and unfortunately, I don't think that that's going to change anytime soon, which is one of the, I mean, probably the most common question that we get all the time is real estate going to crash. What do you think? Yeah, if it's going to crash, if uh, rates are going to keep going up, I, 
and don't quote me on this, but I overheard that they w- they were gonna um, raise interest rates twice. Uh, um, two more meetings. Two more. Two, yeah, this year. So what are we gonna go into the sixes or whatever the case may be? And um, it's it's funny that you saying into the sixes and uh, into the sixes, and I can already see um, some of our viewers. I can hear them through the camera saying. But I paid, you know, 18 percent back in 1970 right. something or 80 right. something. Right. But 18 percent of an eighty thousand dollar loan doesn't mean a lot of money. Seven percent of, you know, four or five hundred thousand dollars. You know, it's a big chunk of money. I mean, seven percent of five hundred thousand dollars. You're probably paying that house over maybe three times by the time you're done in 30 years. So there's different ways of looking yeah. at it then, like cause those people that will say, I was actually having this conversation with a friend of mine not too long ago, and, and he said that historically uh, rates has been always good in the fives and, and the sixes. This was when people were happy the most. Uh, we're looking at like the 80s and the 90s, and you know, um, even one of our agents, uh, Steve, was talking to us about this the other day and he's like oh i remember when my parents were purchased their house and they paid 15 percent and i have no idea how much the house was worth then um but i it's it's what you just said i never thought about it i never thought about that before houses were cheaper back then right um so i don't know I, i i feel like of going back a little bit to what you were saying I feel like the people who are getting hit the most with with rates rising now are the first time home buyers that are coming up with three percent down or three and a half percent down. Um, now, what you're saying is that they they all have to go back to their lender for to for a new pre approval because they can no longer buy what they could buy three months ago. Yeah, it's you know especially uh, the people using the the. Three and a half percent program, for instance, or an FHA program, um, because there's been so many offers on homes. Sellers have a tendency of taking, you know, either the cash offers or the conventional with twenty percent or more uh, down payment. So when you present an FHA offer, sometimes your offer is not even considered because there's so many better offers out there. Um, so you may have been sitting on this pre-approval for three, four, five months, um, and you're still looking at. Uh, at Houses with your agents, um, and at one point in time, you're like, all right, this house fits my budget. Let's go put an offer on it. And sometimes if you don't get a fresh pre-approval, you may be in for a surprise because with rates jumping this much, whatever you qualified for is no longer there. So we've been recommending all of our friends, and whether they work with us or not, just go back to your to your mortgage agent and get pre-approved again because you're going to be surprised with how much lower um, of a home you can afford now because of, of the higher interest rates. I mean, it, it's a 2% jump in about four months. Yeah, no, it's uh, I've, it's the talk of town. Um, but on the other side of, of, of that coin is the sellers. Um, do you feel like there's a shift coming at any point because now with the rates going up, there aren't going to be as many buyers, which we haven't seen that yet. We have seen a little bit of um, um, some agents would, would, would say like, oh, I see a shift happening now. Uh, so that's going to drive sellers to maybe uh, not that they're going to, not that there's going to be a like a huge price drop, but you won't have the buyers offering forty, fifty thousand dollars more for for a property anymore because they can no longer afford that. Yeah. So the shift, uh, we hear, I we hear, we I heard on, on an Instagram account from a local agent here. Um, the guy's actually he sells a lot, um, and so I always listen to 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 his uh, what he has to say about the market, and he feels like. There's a shift coming, and he started to see that already uh, on some on some occasions where there was ten offers. Now there's three offers. There's four offers, um, and you and I were talking about this before we started. And then you're like, "Oh, I, I don't know about that because one of our own agents just put an offer at a slower market, 
right, a um, couple of days ago, uh, and there was 36 offers. His offer was, what, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 more than asking price, and he didn't even make top 10 out of those offers. And he had a good offer, 20% down and, and conventional loan. So it's hard to say uh, when, 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 we're, we're, when that shift is going to be here, if how, what, what's going to happen to, to, to the sellers, if they're going to have to work with buyers a little bit more because of the, the, the rates. Yeah, I think in, in our area, the greater Danbury market, um, there's, it's, it's hard to, I don't think we're going to feel that shift for a while longer. Um, because you take Danbury, for instance, is right with, with whatever, almost 90,000 people here. And then you have all the other smaller towns, Brookfield, Bethel, New Milford, um, with, you know, 20, 30, 50,000 people living in there. Um, on a regular year, we used to get about 3,000 people from New York moving into this area, not only into Danbury, but into this whole area. And then you, um, you take COVID, which accelerated that process. And all of a sudden, you know, 40,000 people came here. If you take 40,000 people out of 8 million people in New York, it's nothing. It's a, it's a drop in a bucket. But when you put 40,000 people in this area coming from, you know, let's say from New York or from whatever other states, New Jersey, all almost at once in a short period of two years, then you cause even more inflated numbers here than you would cause in some other parts of the state. Um, uh, historically, Danbury um, has had a good track record of, of recovering from the crash. It was one of the first cities in the state that recovered from you know, the crash in 2008. Um, and a lot of it is because of our close proximity to New York. And, you know, and slowly New Yorkers move here and they commute to the city and all that. But when you have all of that ha happening all at once, then, then you cause this. So are we, um, we going to see a market shift I don't think, I think sellers would start, sellers would need to feel the pain of not getting offers on properties for a few months before buyers could actually find out that they can put lower offers or they can, they don't have to go as high. So on a traditional uh, property that we put out there uh, representing the seller. So when, when a listing goes out there, we may have 10, 15 offers. Um, let's say if it's a $400,000 listing. Right, and it's price right. We may have you know ten offers that are in the four twenty, four fifty price range, and then we're gonna have those three or four offers that may be seventy five thousand dollars over asking price. I think eventually those will calm down a little bit. Those are gonna uh, because those buyers may not perceive this as a great thing. Those buyers may be fearing what could happen in the future, and they no longer. Uh, want to put an offer that's so much higher. So I think the opportunities to the seller or for the sellers to make good money on their homes are slowly coming to an end now. They're still going to make, actually an opportunity for the seller to make great money on their home is finally coming to an end now. They're still going to make good money because there's still more New Yorkers coming here. There's still more people from New Jersey coming here. Um, and the taxes. comps, the comps yeah. around the air is like everything that's been selling, right? Correct. But then... Little by little, uh, we're going to start seeing uh, more consistent offers on homes. You know, a home is priced right, goes out there, maybe only, you know, twenty dollars to $30,000 um, offers on those homes now as opposed to the fifty or seventy five. dollars um, A uh, couple of months back, we put an offer on a property in Danbury. It was four twenty five. dollars I thought it was underpriced. So my client wanted to put four twenty four fifty, dollars and I said four fifty dollars is not going to make it. Like, let's forget about what it's selling for. Let's figure out its true value. And I, I, I think I thought it was going to be over 450 um, any time of day. It had a nice swimming pool. If you got it, if you had to build that pool today, you probably spend about eighty thousand dollars. So he went to the edge of his affordability, which was about four hundred sixty thousand dollars, and we put that offer. Um, and I think that home is going to close for about five twenty five, and there were fifty something offers on that home. Fifty something offers. Yeah. Wow. That just goes to show that, and you talk about this all the time, if you have a client for that particular criteria for that home, now when you're going to put an offer at another home, you know there's 55 other people is tight. <laughs> looking for the same property. Yeah. 
that's crazy um yeah i mean it's just uh, like I, I i feel like as much as we we can come we can kind of like see what, like which direction is going and, and and whatnot but like i feel like at the end of the day only time will tell right you you it's it's super hard to predict in our market because take a let's say five hundred thousand dollar home for instance um most most people with an average pay of fifty sixty thousand dollars so put two people together a couple now you can make that a hundred hundred twenty thousand dollars a year minus all the expenses they qualify for that five hundred thousand dollar home their competition is somebody coming from new york or new jersey or maybe a different state and for you to live in the city, if you're not making two, three hundred thousand dollars a year, you're almost starving. So you make the money. Yeah. You just you're looking to get out of the city now. Um, you've been trying to get out for a while. You've made the executive decision, or maybe your company allows you to work remotely now. You're coming here, put in. You know that person will be coming here, put in an offer on a five hundred thousand dollar home. They're not comping out this five hundred thousand dollar home with other comparables from our market. They're looking at what they have back in right. Brooklyn or Queens right. or Manhattan. You know, yeah. they have, they're looking at their million and a half dollar condo, which two bedrooms and 600 square feet, which is all they can buy for that price. So when they yeah. look at this $500,000, I'm like, yeah, we'll go 550, no problem. Yeah. And, and, and they look at it, for example, those people, those people that you were, you just said, they're looking at the $50,000 that they paid over the property five months ago or a year ago, but they had a 3% rate. Yeah. They're like winning. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, or, or no problem there just yeah. because imagine if they have to pay $50,000 over now yeah. and the rates being two point, yeah. uh, uh, more two points than what it used to be. So it's just like a lot of people were waiting. A lot of people were waiting oh, the market's going to crash and I'm going to be able to buy, <laughs> buy a property with the All 2%. I can think of is a skeleton with, you know, a little sign waiting for me to uh, buy a property when the market crashes. Yes, <laughs> yes. And now they're like, whoa, prices didn't drop, and, but rates are, are, are up now. So, and it, it comes also the, the, the fact of, I'm sure that sellers are starting to look at this. Okay, like maybe I don't want to miss the window of, of selling. Um, but then again, they they run into the problem now that they have to buy. Prices did not drop, and now when, wherever they're gonna buy, if they don't have sufficient funds to buy that house cash, now they're gonna get into a higher rate. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's you know, we keep talking to people and see if we can get you know more homes on the market uh, just so we can help create more inventory in the market. But it's it's a hard place for a seller too because you know, where seller. are you gonna go? Yeah. You're gonna sell yeah. your place and then what? Yeah, you know, you're gonna sell your place and pay more, way more in rent somewhere else than you had on your mortgage. You're gonna go through, um, you know, moving. Yeah. Um, so it's it's hard on both sides. That, that's another factor. Rent are are really through high the roof. through the roof. So, you know, and, and so people the rates are up. Prices didn't come down. Rent went up. Whoever was waiting is totally out well, of luck at it's, this it's, point. It's a historical problem, right? In 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, we did not build enough homes to support the population growth that we're having now, 10, 15 years later. Nor did we build enough homes to support the biggest generation of buyers, which is the millennials, because uh, the average buyer today is 33 Average buyer used to be 25, not, you know, two generations ago. Right. You know, so in the early 2000s, um, you know, millennials were still, you know, high school, college. They couldn't buy at that time. Uh, they couldn't really buy as soon as they got out of college because, you know, um, high cost of, of, you know, student loans and all of that. But then you fast forward to now, now they can buy. This is the biggest pool of buyers ever. And we don't have enough new constructions to support all of that. But of course, the cost of new construction is through the roof right now because of supply and demand and, and lumber and all that because of what COVID created. So it's a mess and it's going to be a while before it gets sorted out. I mean, and, and when you're looking at towns like where we are, there's not a lot of land for sale. 
So eventually this is going to drive people further inland. You know, maybe it's going to drive a lot of people to the Midwest, you know. So if you're a big company right now, it may pay to go where there's plenty of land and you can start from a small town and make that small town, uh, uh, you know, bigger um, just so the cost of living could still be accessible to most people. Because right now, I mean, the cost of living here is through the roof because everything got super expensive. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I even I I, I was talking to a um, investor the other day, and and we were looking at a property that we were just finalizing for him to sell, and he decided not to sell and to rent it because he just didn't want to reinvest his money right now in real estate because it was higher than he wanted. So the ROI was not where he wanted to be. He just didn't have a place to put his money. So he, he, he wanted to stay with the property. So there's so many different factors of, of, of what's going on now. And I'm, I'm happy that we were taking the time to kind of like discuss, uh, um, um, uh, current, current, current matters. Um, and I would ask also, um, our, our co workers and, and people that are in the industry to comment, uh, in this podcast to, to give us your thoughts on, on what's going on, shine a light. Um, and, um, I, you know, it's, it's one of those things like we, we scratching our heads every day, like how to get new business and, and we have, we have, we don't have enough sellers. Uh, we have buyers that are, um, getting a little scared not right now because of, of, of rates going up, but then in some markets, there's still a lot going on. So it's just, it, there, there's, there's so much, uh, in the industry right now that it's, it's, it's hard to read. You yeah, know? definitely unprecedented times. And, uh, the message that goes out to either side is, um, you know, a seller right now, yeah, they can put the house on the market and sell it in a heartbeat, but then where are they going to go? So if they have a place to go, then then definitely sell it right now. That's probably the best approach. Will the prices continue to go up? I don't, I'm not sure. Will they kind of stabilize a little bit? I believe so. Um, but for you to get the most for your house right now is the time to do it. If you have a different place to go. So if you're going into, you know, if you're going down South or Midwest, wherever else you move in, if you're moving out of state, um, then of course there's more work to be done in organizing this, um, you know, the, the purchase of the other property, um, wherever you're going. But let's say we have a couple of friends who, uh, have a place that, you know, have their primary house that they can sell and they're thinking about moving out of state and then they have a rental that they can stay in for a year or two for a decent price. So sometimes they have an investment property that they can move into for, you know, for very cheap in that case, um, then definitely sell now. And then, of course, for our buyers is, um, I think the, the main message that, um, that we like to, to, that I like to send out to, to my buyer clients, uh, it's hard to focus on the cost of everything going up and hope that it's going to come down because it may not ever come down. So the one thing that we can control is let's focus on our income. Like this is a message that I've been talking to a lot of my buyers is what can you do? to improve your own income? What can you, can you get new certifications? Can you work harder? Can you work more hours? Can you, what can you do to have a higher income? Don't really rely on, on rates going down these, or, or rates or, 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 prices or prices of, exactly yeah. of everything. Yeah. Um, you know, if the minimum wage is going up to $15, um, guess what's going to be more expensive? The food. You know, that, that whatever restaurants you're going to, that food is going to be more expensive yeah. because yeah. rates went up. Yeah. Um, or because because wages went up, so um, I think the the main message that I, I I'm always talking to my to my buyers is find a way to make more money find a find a way to pay down more debt so you can afford more. Um, is it a good time to buy? Yes. If you bought a house thirty years ago, you probably bought that house for hundred and hundred twenty thousand dollars. That house is four hundred now, maybe four fifty. So it tripled since then. And what's yeah. going to happen in the next thirty years? Yeah. It's going to triple again, but you can secure a mortgage right now for the next 30 years for what you consider high, to be high now is going to be super low 10 or 15 years from now. Right. So this is a good time to buy, secure a mortgage now. And then, you know, rates are a little higher. Eventually they'll come down. Refinance at that time. Refinance at that time. So basically your message is worry on what you can do today. 
right? There's, there's about that, what you can't yeah, control. There, there's that. There's that saying like, "There's two days that you cannot live. You can do anything about is that's yesterday and that's tomorrow." Yeah. Um. So what we can what you can do today, if it's in your budget to buy something now, go ahead. If not, if you have to wait a little bit more and work on on your craft and and, and maybe raise up some more money, then so be it. But work within your means, yeah. right? Do what you can control. Do what you can control. So there's no ROI. There's no return of investment on worrying about yeah. stuff that you have no control over. Zero. 90% yeah. of it doesn't even yeah. happen anyway. Yeah. And that goes to show like, uh, to the people who has been waiting and waiting and waiting because their cousin or the friend said, Oh no, it's going to come down. All oh, the prices are going to come Missed down. Their train. It's like the 2008 and now like, look what happened. You know what I mean? So, um, but Hey, uh, thank you for this. Uh, I'm sure that if we, uh, keep talking about this we can be here for a couple hours of everything that's going on with us with the lighthouse uh, uh, team here um, we have uh, close to 20 agents now and so we hear these things uh, that are happening on a daily basis and um, for those of you our audience out there um, don't forget to like to subscribe uh, to share this information this is we take our most valuable asset which is our time to create some great content uh, worth of worth millions of dollars, and we're giving to you for free. <laughs> um, you can subscribe for thirty nine ninety nine a month. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and and like I said, I w- I want to extend that um, invitation again to to the people in the industry to comment uh, and to let us know what your thoughts are. We don't know everything. Uh, we we are always learning. And uh, we would love to be, to hear what your guys' experiences are and, and what you're going through. And um, we'll see you guys next time uh, with the Lighthouse Podcast. Take care.